Now then YouTube, I am the Tough Man and welcome back to some more Man City Youth Challenge. Now, you guys have literally, I think just today, uh, seen a episode of this, my, my previous episode from before this season. Um, but I did that like ages ago, I, I actually recorded that like proper ages ago, so I haven't had a chance to actually gauge people's reactions on things uh, up until now. And it seems that, uh, you know, I'm not doing too bad, guys, I've got to say. We've got into a new season, and I'm not doing too bad. 15 points, but that's regardless of anything, because all the games I've had so far have been, you know, pretty easy games um, in terms of opposition. Now, we're just going to, we, we're going to talk a little bit about what I've been doing pre-season, um, what I've been doing since you last saw that video, and um, what the results that I've got, the, the Champions League group that I'm in, as you can see, I've got Bayern Munich there, some people have already probably seen it, uh, the eagle-eyed viewers. Now, alright, so I went to have a look at two, two goalkeepers, defensive centre, a defensive left, and a mid, uh, and a mid centre. I never actually put that on the video, but I did need another one of those midfielders, those a box to box midfielder or a, a deep lying playmaker midfielder. One of them two. I needed one to cover the other because I realised uh, soon after I started the season that um, Javi Garcia got an injury. It was only a little injury, but it was out for a game. And then I'm like, oh, hang on a minute, I've got nobody to cover him. So I needed an actual, you know, one of those deep midfielders, I like to call them, either the, the deep line playmaker or that box-to-box -box midfielder. That reminds me as also, guys, if we actually go over to our tactics, you can see that um, I've changed my tactics ju only just slightly, just slightly, to this 4-2-3 Milan one. Now, I've got... I've got a few, uh, two different 4 2 3 ones. This one, and uh, the Milan, uh, this one, which is the, is the Milan one, and then the 4 3 2 one, which is the Goals Galar one. But I think that this one actually complements my team a lot more. So let's go uh, and have a look at the new players that I've bought in the positions that I told you about. Well, we've got a goalkeeper in called Daniel Marshall. Now, believe it or not, this guy is Italian with a dem name like Daniel Marshall. It's Kind of strange, but even though th this guy is four and a half stars. Now, originally I was going to go into the market for Courtois from Chelsea, but I thought to myself, um, after reading some people's comments and reminding myself that I don't actually need to get rid of Joe Hart until he's 27, uh, until he's 29, was he? So it's 29. Um, I don't have to actually get rid of him until then. And then I thought to myself, well, I've got a few years to actually, you know, do up a goalkeeper. So there's no sense going out there and spending um, 20 million on Courtois when really I don't need to. I can just get a young goalkeeper and then, you know, bring him in for cup matches or send him out on loan or which, whichever way I want him to do it. And then let him grow as we go along. This guy, 18 years old, Daniel Marshall, so he still falls within my player's limit. Um, of course, with goalkeepers, it's 21, not 18. But the thing is that, that for, for an 18 years old, this guy is pretty, pretty awesome. And I actually got him, I pilfered him more than got him. Uh, I paid 1.1 million in compensation because I just offered him a contract straight off which was Ledge. Uh, and this guy, I think I've got him on the loan list. I don't know, actually. Um, Panti Pantilimon wanted to actually... He wanted to leave, uh, but nobody wanted him. And then he got injured, and then it was like, oh, no, I want to be taken off the list. So I took him off the list uh, for the moment. So I could send Daniel Marshall out on you know on loan. Um, if we go to his training, his uh, coach report, you can see... He's going to be a good player for most championship sides, becoming a leading Premier Division goalkeeper in the future. Uh, I have high hopes for Jack Marshall. Now, Pantillamon, if we actually go to his coach report, he isn't much better. Uh, decent player for most Premier Division sides. So he is slightly better than Daniel Marshall at the moment. Uh, however, Daniel Marshall, I'm sure, will, will trump him eventually. So we're going to offer him to clubs, and we're going to offer him out on loan. And I like to do season-long loans with my young guys. Just to give them that uh, experience, he's got they've, they've, he's got to be first team though to get that uh, that that game time for the uh, progression of his stats. Um, wages nobody needs to pay anything because I'm making tons of money in wages. Uh, well, I've I'm not making tons of money in wages. You'll see anyway when I go through the uh, the finances. So let's uh, let's make that offer and see if anybody wants him. Um, also, guys, um, the acquisition of. Ma 
Matthias Ginter, or Ginter, whatever you want to call him. This guy is, um, where is he? There he is. He's German. And this guy is great. I've got to say, guys, um, how much did I buy him for? Let me have a look. I wrote it down here. 12 million I bought him for. So, yeah, a bit expensive. Um, but this guy had to do, had to, he had to actually um, become backup, really, for the for Kurt Zuma and Varane, who are the first two first team guys now, those two. Um, so, this guy was backup. And. He's going to be playing a couple of matches, you know, here and there. Maybe once every three matches or something like that when one of the other two needs a rest. But this guy, look at his stats. He's just absolutely brilliant for a 19-year-old. This guy is great. If you go to his coach report, he's actually a decent player for most Premier Division sides. So he fits straight into a Premier Division side, uh, but it has the potential to become a leading Premier Division uh, uh, player in the future. Um, that is, of course, Matthias or Matthias. Matthias Ginter, that's what I'm going to call him, Matthias Ginter. The, I also got another central defender in, because I thought, you know what, I'm going to pump for another. Now, I actually had my eyeball on this guy for a long, long time. He's played one match so far, and absolutely bossed that match. This guy is Samuel Umtiti. Mmm, <laughs> titties. So, Samuel Umtiti, uh, 8 million I actually got this bloke for. Not bad, considering that this guy is going to be another leading Premier Division uh, uh, defender in the future. This means, guys, that even though I'm spending the likes of 8 million, 12 million stuff like on players now, I'm sure that they'll be worth 20 million in the future when it comes to 26 and being having to sell these on. So if we go to the coach report here, you can see uh, a leading star for most end power championship sides. Um, leading star or not, this guy did very well in the Premier Division match that I actually put him out in. I can't remember which one it was, but he certainly did very well. Look, you can see, Premier Division future. Nice. Now, the defensive left I actually went out to get was, of course, Jetro Willems. Now, uh, Jetro is a proven guy. He really is a proven, proven guy. If we go to his reports, the coach report, a good player for most uh, Premier Division sides. And that's the type of player I wanted. 19 years old, gets straight in a Premier Division side, and he becomes a leading Premier Division left-back in the future. That is exactly the type of player I wanted, uh, to obviously then bring up Luke Shaw and Karim Rekic in the background. That's, that, that is exactly the player I wanted as the defensive left. The striker I brought in was Mbei Niang. Not done too bad. Started two games, two as a substitute, and scored two goals so far. Not bad. Since I've got rid of Zeko... Um, it just seems to me that some of the other players have stepped up to fill the mark where Zeko has, has left one. Aguero, five games started, one as a substitute, scored three goals so far. Samir Nasri, who, let me have a look at the uh, the history for Nasri here. You can see 28 games, only scored seven goals, made five assists. This season so far, he's only, only appeared in five games, three goals, two assists already. Um, he certainly has stepped up a little bit more since since then. That's because most of the time either uh, Aguero's playing there and then Nazareth's playing there, uh, which would usually be the likes of David Silva on the left, where he's, he's gone now. So, of course, Sami Nazareth is like a mainstay over on the left there um, when Gerard Dolefu, um is back to full fitness, though, because he got injured. Uh, back to full fitness, and I'm sure that uh, I'll be swapping those two around and you know letting them play. Uh, but that's Mbei Niang as a striker. Um, you guys already saw the acquisition of Fermo Favini, head of youth development. The guy's an absolute legend. Let's go to this staff. Fermo Favini. Look at his stats. It's just ridiculous. 20, 20, 20, 18, 16. This guy should be a manager, not fucking head of youth development. But I'm... I'm going to lean on this guy when it comes to like the end of the season, and um, this 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 guy here is in control of my under 18s. I don't touch my under 18s. This guy is totally in control of them. He says whether they go out on loan. He says what's coming in, who's going out, who's good enough, who's not good enough. Because I trust this guy. I really, really do trust this guy. Working with youngsters, 20. You know, determination, 20. Judging player ability, 18. P player potentials, 20. Discipline, 20. Motivating, 18. Uh, tactical knowledge is 17. Man management, 18. The guy is a fucking amazing. He really is. Um, and I, I trust that guy to look after my under-18s. Uh, you know, totally. I think he's absolutely brilliant. 
and the midfield centre guy that I actually went uh, went out to go and get was Leon Goretzka from um, from from Germany. Uh, where did I get him from? And how much for? 11.25 million from Dortmund. Um, he's played one game so far, and that's purely because Javi Garcia got um, suspended, I think, or got injured, one of the two, I can't remember. Um, but as you can see, guys, 26-year-olds that are floating around, discounting Joe Hart this time, I will remember that in the future. 26-year-old Javi Garcia won't be here at the end of the season, so buying Luke, Le, Leon Goretzka now is a good thing, because he will then fill the gap that Javi Garcia leaves when, when he leaves, when he moves on. That is uh, Leon Goretzka, which of course then, after that, I can then, you know, buy some more people and, you know, so on and so forth. But look at all these wages that I'm managing to cut down. Um, Sergio Aguero is 25, so he'll be 26 next season. I've got him for this season and next, guaranteed, for Aguero. Um, but Sami Nasri, um, he will be leaving at the end of this season. He turns 27, I think, in January sometime. I can't remember, but he will be leaving. Um, as well, no, Castel, Castel Pantelimon is 26. He's, he's a goalkeeper, so that I don't really can't. Other than that, um, that's about it. Just Sami Anasri um, and Javi Garcia are going to be leaving, but that's, what, 250 grand worth of wages that I can possibly replace that with 100 grand's worth of wages. So that brings me on quite nicely to my next little thing, which is the finances. These are the finances so far. Uh, the transfer budget at the moment stands at 78 million. Um, that was the transfer budget this season. However, you know, selling players, uh, buying players and stuff like that. The transfer budget remaining is actually more than what they were giving me in the first place. Um, and I've done what I wanted to do. 100% uh, of the transfer is made available for me. 81 million, that's just mental. Look at the wage budget, 2.65 million a week, and I think I've got about 1 million left to actually, you know, spend if I really wanted to. However, that's not the way that I want to do this. This playthrough is basically uh, aimed around two big massive aims. Number one is to get youth in and to, you know, to get them out again when it turns, when they turn 27. So basically, I'm buying in the youth uh, for hopefully minimal amount of money, I know that, uh, that's not, not going to be the case in the future, but um, minimal, minimal amounts of money, to, pff, at the most I think I've spent about 20 million on one player, um, I, I don't think, it, I can't even remember if it was that, it was last season, it was Rafael Varane, I can't remember how much money it was, um, but still, that guy is an absolute legend, he really is, legend at the uh, centre back, and other than that, I've spent around about 11 million, 12 million on players. Now, this is going to change, guys. Trust me on this. This is going to change because um, last season, I put in a request to the boardroom to do my youth facilities up and to do my training facilities up. Now, both of them at the moment are on top quality like training facilities, top quality youth facilities. Um, I think there is another one more, there is one more jump above that, so I think it's called state-of-the-art youth facilities and state-of-the-art training facilities. That's what I'm aiming for, because then I can bring through, you know, players from my youth team, and that's what I want to be. I want to, Manchester City to be self-sufficient. I don't want to have to buy people in to, you know, then sell them later on, then buy more youngsters in, then sell them later on, buy more youngsters in. I want to actually get the youngsters up through my youth facilities. That's the main aim, because then I'm not spending money on transfer budgets. I never touch a transfer budget, and then I can, you know, get players in from my youth facilities. They go up to 26 years old, uh, 27 years old, then they get sold, and it's pure profit, absolute pure profit. And this is what's going to change Manchester City's finances. Now, at the moment, guys, we're running on a £15 million loss. Most of that was transfer uh, spends, but we're still running on, if you take them out of you know contention, £5 million in the red. Now, that's not as bad as what it was last season, I believe. Can I actually look at the history of last season? No. But uh, that's not as bad as what it was last season, by any means. Um, because you can see there, look. Uh, the total wage costs last season was £168 million. Pounds. That, that is ridiculous. That really is mental. Now, if I can change that, then I'm at least going in the right direction. Turnover and expenditure here. Um, I'm getting £8 million pounds worth of turnover 
and £40 million worth of expenditure. If we actually look at last month's, it's more of a, you know, this month, we, where are we in this month? 28th. So we've still got the end of this week to go, and then that's going to be the end of this month. We'll, we'll review these finances as we go in through the season because, of course, uh, August, September is where the transfer budget is and we're still looking at transfer budgets and, and agents' fees and the expenditures and stuff like that. We're still looking at all that. Now, if, can I actually look at detailed expenditures? Yeah, agent fees. Look, nearly a million pound in weird agent fees. Um, Non-footballing costs, 3.1 million. Transfer expenditure, 11.3 million. So if we cut... If we actually go through October, November, we've got more of an idea of what's going on with our finances coming in and going out and so on and so forth. The projection, look at that, from, from being this all the way down to actually levelling us off to a good amount. Now, that, to me, I'm starting to get somewhere. However, I want this to turn around and I want it all to just constantly go up and up and up. That is what my main aim is with this, with this uh, playthrough to bring that youth facilities, to be totally self-sufficient on Manchester City's youth facilities, as well as to make a profit and make this business uh, prof profitable. That is the main aim of this playthrough. At the moment, we're going all right. We're, we're turning it around. But remember, guys, these first couple of seasons, after the first season, you know, we're getting rid of the first team players that were part of Manchester City in the first place and bringing in all these new young players um, they still have to find their feet, um, they still have to get their, their experience and stuff like that. But then, you know, after, after the fourth, fifth and sixth seasons, you're looking at constant people being shifted around. You know, when, when Rafael Varane in six years turns 26, 27 years old, he will have somebody else behind him already. It's a constant stream of youth and experience. And I'm hoping to mix that in as I'm going along, especially this team here is a, a mix of youth and experience. Mika Richards is obviously an experienced person. Javi Garcia, uh, Nasri, Aguero, all the experienced people. Even so much as uh, Oxlade Chamberlain there, he's not experienced in the fact that he's got years behind him. However, he's experienced in the fact that he's played for Arsenal first team, he's played for me first team for most of last season when he wasn't injured. So he's still got that experience there. And that's what I like to do, and I will be constantly trying to do this, mixing in my 26 year olds with my 18, 19, 20 year olds, but if they're not that good enough, much like what Jean-Marie Dongo is at the minute, he's not particularly brilliant. When he's 20, maybe, I think he might turn into a really, really good player. And Bainiang, not doing very bad for me at all so far. Let's have a look at the fixtures and see how we've been doing at the start of this season. Now, you guys actually left me last time against... Um, it was I was just about to kick off against Cardiff. I haven't lost a match just yet. However, none of these have been particularly hard, apart from PSG, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, I absolutely destroyed PSG. It was a, it was an eye-opener. I couldn't believe that I would have done that to PSG, to be honest, but uh, we'll get to that in a second. 2-1 against Cardiff, um, you know, uh, let me see who scored, Kurt Zuma and uh, Sergio Aguero in the 85th minute, it was squeaky bum time, it would definitely was squeaky bum time, especially when Cardiff went 1-0 up, um, if we actually go to, can we go to the stats? Yeah, look, three clear cut chances um, and two goals t for the name there, eight on target, they had no clear cut chances, still managed to score one, but they did have six on target. Um, so, you know, pretty half and half match, really, I think, on that one. Uh, we, we were good to get a result from that. Southampton 2 0, 69th and 75th minute. It was John Guidetti and Rafael Varane scoring both the goals there. That's where Javi Garcia, he got sent off, that was right. He got sent off, and I was like, I've got nobody to cover him. So that's when I, when I bought Goretzka. So look at the stats on that. Match, set, match stats. Um, Southampton actually had two on target. Um, but I think both of them either it came off the woodwork or something like that. They were um, like harder than what this made out. You know, two 0 very nice win, of course, but they were harder than than what you give them credit for. Two 0 Newcastle was the next match. A very very difficult match this was. Rafael Varane, seventeen and forty fourth minute. Um, I think this was was it this one that was a difficult match. Yeah, it was. Look, look at the amount of shots I had and shots on target. No clear-cut chances, yet both my shots on target went in. That is good. 
Newcastle, seven shots, three shots on target, no clear, clear cut chances. Only a smidgen in it in possession. This was a very, very tight match. So to win 2 0, to come away with a, a result away at Newcastle, very nice indeed. West Brom, 3 1. You could see Sergio Aguero penalty opened the scoring. Nasri with the 43rd minute goal. Uh, they actually drew, uh, come back, come back and equalised. 40th. Uh, 40th minute, then Sammy and, uh, Sammy and Azri just before half time, 43rd minute Jack Rodwell, then in injury time putting it beyond all doubt of course and uh, getting us the result there if we go to the uh, stats, match stats 22 shots on uh, 22 shots total, 11 on target and this is a, um, a problem that's really winding me up because even though I'm telling them to do things differently, you know, and I, you know, my shouts uh, wise, you know, I'm telling them to work it into the box. I'm telling them to pass to their feet. I'm telling them to, you know, really keep possession and shoot when they've got a chance. They're still getting half of their shots off target, and uh, it's quite interesting, guys. I have no idea what this means, um, but on target, 11 shots. Okay, off target, six shots. So that's 17 shots in total. What happened to the other five? Where did they go? I don't, I, you know, did they go up the referee's ass or something? I, I don't know. I don't know where they get this, this stat from. Maybe it hit the woodwork. Maybe I'd hit the woodwork that many fucking times. Um, which yeah, wouldn't surprise me. It seems like all we can do re recently is just hit the woodwork. But 3-1, very nice result indeed. Then we had PSG. And I thought I was bracing myself for a loss. A terrible loss, I really was. I thought they would be absolutely all over me, but they just weren't. They just weren't. Gareth Barry looked playing for PSG. Um, they just weren't there, really, in terms of goals and stuff. And Bain Yang scoring the first, Sergio Aguero scoring the second, and Oxley Chamberlain scoring the third. A few bookings in there, but still the match stats. Oh, they're real up. Um, shots, nine, six on target, three goals. That's nice indeed. Six on, sh on target they had. So they had more shots. They had just as the same on target, but none of them went in. Um, so, 50 set. They have more possession as well. So that was, I thought I was going to get totally screwed up there. Um, now, this is a worrying stat, actually. The fact that they out they the action zones for PSG were more in the middle than for me. Um, I've got five midfielders totally, so there is no excuse of why some another team should have more possession and more play in the middle of the field. I you know that's something I'll have to work out and figure out why that is. Um, Wolves a four-one win against Wolves, very nice indeed. Matthias Ginter scoring his first goal for the club. Uh, Sami Nasri scoring two, and Mbain Yang scoring another one. By the way, guys, uh, Mbain Yang's earlier goal, whenever that was, that was his debut, and he scored on his debut, so I was quite happy about that. Um, 11 shots, 7 on target, 4 went in. 11 shots, 6 on target, 1 went in. That's how I like it. That's how I like it. It's about time I get the fucking luck in this game. Stoke, it took extra time to deal with this but there was a reason for that and that's because I put out my entire second team apart from Joe Hart uh, I put all my second team out the ones that I weren't using at the time uh, for this match because I knew I had this match that was coming up next this Liverpool match um, so I want to keep my fully fit first team if I can because I know Liverpool can be a pain in the ass they seem to always beat me Anyway, Crouch were the one, he scored first, then Matthias Ginter in the last minute, and I was in, I was on overload, shoot on sight, you know, whip the ball into the back, just get it fucking forward, push higher up, take more risks, I shoved everything on it at that 86th minute, Matthias Ginter saved the day on the back post and banged it in. John Guidetti then scored another one in extra time, after I dropped, a, I dropped back to a more conservative style of play, and got John, John Guidetti scoring the winner there, or what turned out to be the winner. Um, Bal Balotelli is just shit. I've been trying to get rid of him, but because he was injured at the end of the season, I couldn't get rid of him. It was annoying as hell. We've got a game against Liverpool next. I'm of course not going to show that on camera. Most of most of um, this playthrough now is just going to be me talking about stuff, going through finances, talk, going through my results, talking about my results, talking about people that I'm looking at. And um, by all means, I mean, you guys can make suggestions and stuff. However, now I'm in my second season. Some of the ages and some of the um, the stats that you know from previously, um, obviously I can't sign anybody that's above 19 years old. So you've got to keep that in mind when, you know, 
uh, commenting and stuff like that. We've got Liverpool, then we've got Bayern Munich, and then we've got some like easier kind of games here. And this is exactly what I like. This, these um, after the Bayern Munich game here, um, then we've got some nice easy games after that to try and get us back into things before then we get hit by Man United and then PSG straight after that. Then an Aston Villa game. Then Everton, Bayern Munich, Tottenham, Chelsea. That is a horrendous run of of games there. It's going to be um, hell is December. It really is. Well, the end of December is not going to be too bad, but the, this kind of December here, the beginning of December, it's going to be pretty pretty, uh, pretty hard. Do Where do I think we, I'm going to finish this season? Well, I don't know. I would. My aim is to finish in the top four. Champions League football is massive. To this club and massive. If we don't get Champions League football, I'm sacked. That is how I'm looking at it. So to have five wins out of five sets me up quite nicely. But now we've got we've we've still got to deal with all the rest of the big teams like Liverpool, Man United, Tottenham, Chelsea. Chelsea, look at that. Uh, Chelsea down the bottom. Um, we've still got to deal with these big teams, Arsenal, and. That will decide where we place, basically, I think, the results against the top teams rather than the results against the bottom ones. To finish the bottom ones off like we are doing, that's very nice. However, we still need to do the job against the top teams. Top four is where I'm aiming for. And then in the future, we can look at trying to win the league. But top four is definitely on my priority. Where do I want to finish in the Champions League? My personal, I would like to get to the semis again. That would be very nice. I don't necessarily have to win it. I just want to get to the semis. I would love to get to the final. I would love to win it. However, and I was speaking to my cousin about this because he's doing like a Swindon football manager at the moment. Um, and he's talking to me about, you know, I've, I've just finished mid-table of in uh, in the championship in my first season. I was like, hey, a nice one. Um, now, it was like, where are you? And I'm like, I'm top of the league at the minute. And I've just beaten PSG 3-0. Now the thing is, I don't want to go out and win the Premier League, and I don't want to go out and win the Champions League straight away. Otherwise, what would be the point in the series? Because I've done everything already. So to actually finish in the top four, to give myself that leeway, would be very nice. Um, the semi-finals is perfectly all right for me in the Champions League. Yes, I'd like to go on and win it, but if I win things too early, I'm afraid people will be like, um, people won't be as interested in upcoming seasons and seasons to come if I've already won these things what's the point in carrying on if you know what I mean my aim for Man City guys is to get that youth facilities get them top state of the art be self-sufficient with Manchester City and be in profit with Manchester City making loads of money as a business would do that's my aim that's what I'm going for if the league title and the uh, the Champions League fall into that as well, the Champions League uh, Cup. If they fall into that, then that's lovely. If they don't, I've still got my premier, um, my aims, and that's what I'm aiming for. Anyway, guys, I uh, hope you've liked this episode. It's not been particularly, well, fruitful, if you know what I mean, in terms of gameplay and stuff like that. And like I said, guys, most of my episodes won't be... Uh, matches and stuff like that now because I'm going to go ahead off camera do loads of matches try and get my uh, my uh, my head sorted with what kind of uh, tactics does what and stuff like that and you guys want to know what happens at the end of the season who do I buy who comes up who scores loads of goals that's what you're interested in not particularly the games uh, at least that's what I thought now Interestingly enough, you can see West Brom in second place here. They're on minus goal difference. That just shows you guys that sometimes um, you don't need to win every match to be uh, by 7, 8 nil and stuff like that to actually be in the top four. West Brom in the top four at the minute, and they're still on minus goal difference. So, Anyway, guys, um, that's it for this episode. Please put your thoughts in the comment section below. I do read every single comment that I get, or at least I try. Um, I don't necessarily reply to everyone. I do apologise for that, but if I did that, I wouldn't. I'd never get any videos done. So until next time, guys. I am Didn't Soft Man. As always, stay safe.